in the wild world of crypto, you always got to watch out for scams and frauds. That's why Bitcoin, the world's top cryptocurrency, uses a technique called proof of work to keep your money safe. But this technique has a big downside. It uses massive amounts of electricity, which means that many people, including me, are concerned about the environmental impact. But wait, there's a promising alternative called proof of stake that's much more energy efficient and it's being adopted by leading blockchains like Ethereum for their next gen efforts. If you care about the environmental impact of crypto, this is worth digging into. To help us understand the difference between proof of work and proof of stake, let's check in with crypto expert and Wharton professor Kevin Werbach. this environment question comes up. So I'm curious how you feel about the environmental impacts of crypto. Yeah, huge issue, real issue has been an issue all along. The environmental concern is about proof of work blockchains, about the mining process where there's a race to solve a, a cryptographic puzzle every certain amount of time. That's the way Bitcoin works. That's today the way Ethereum works. It's not the way most newer blockchains work. And Ethereum from the beginning has committed to switching to a different system called proof of stake. They're now in the process of starting to make that transition. So we're really probably just talking about Bitcoin. And, and this is something where no one can snap their fingers and say, you know what, Bitcoin should go to a different system because it's so decentralized and it's hard to change. Now, there's benefits of that in terms of security and there's concerns about the alternatives, but they seem to be viable and there's lots of good technical work going on making them viable. So it's not all crypto has this problem. I think certainly long term, a big challenge for Bitcoin. For a long time, everyone said, well, yeah, we know this, but no one cares. People care. People really care very deeply right now. And the fact that Elon Musk felt the need to say, oh, I am concerned about this because of the pressure he was getting. And of course, his whole story with Tesla and so forth is about renewables. That's significant. And so the tide seems to be turning. I think it's going to be increasingly in the interest of the community to go in that direction. And long-term renewables are already cheaper on a one-to-one -one basis on subsidized than fossil fuels. So I'm comfortable saying I would not treat Bitcoin or cryptocurrency like cigarettes, like it's inherently bad and we should just stay away from it. Either the market will transition such that it's not as much of a problem, or this will be one of the things that actually leads to the proof of stake type blockchains winning. Yes. So this brings me to a couple of questions. Can you mm -hmm. define briefly at a high level, Kevin, proof of work versus mm -hmm. proof of stake? This seems to be mm -hmm. a critical issue. Yeah. Tell us what this is. Right. So the big challenge on a blockchain is decentralized verification, right? You want to get everyone agrees that I've got three Bitcoin and Amy joe has got two Bitcoin. All right. So I say I've got 20 Bitcoin and she's got none. Well, do you trust me or not? And so the consensus system has to be decentralized. So everyone is updating the ledger, but someone gets the right to say, this is the transaction that is going to be accepted on the ledger. And then everyone verifies what they say. And so the question is, how do you pick that person each time? Because I'll say, yeah, pick me, pick me. You can trust me. Guess what? I've got 20 Bitcoin and everyone else has none. So there has to be some provably random way of picking and then verifying who adds the block to the ledger. And that's what the proof of work system does for Bitcoin. And it's basically a verifiably fair lottery where the idea is there's a, call it a cryptographic puzzle. It's not really a math problem per se, but it's something which is designed such that no one can guarantee they will be the winner, but your probability of winning in each cycle is proportional to the amount of computation you devote to the task. So you're incentivized to throw more computation at it because therefore you're more likely winning. And the reward is if you win, then you get a reward in Bitcoin. You now get six and a quarter Bitcoin for every block that you are the one who gets to mine. That's the proof of work. You have to prove that you have done the work. Doing the work doesn't guarantee anything. You could spend all that money on computation and not win in each cycle. Almost everyone does. But in order to win, you must prove, and it's designed so you can't cheat. You can't do what's called a Sybil attack and say, look, I've got a million computers because you basically spun up a million instances on the same physical computer. Everyone needs to actually do this computational work, which is expensive. 
That's proof of work. And guess what? It works. This is actually a major technical breakthrough. Now, the basic idea was around before Satoshi and stuff, but to do this in practice at this scale is unbelievable. But the problem is, again, you've got to prove you did the work. And the work means computation. It means spending the money on computers and using a ton of electricity. That's the problem. You can't shortcut it because if you did something where you weren't using a lot of electricity, then it would be cheaper and you would eventually be doing a civil attack. Proof of stake is another technical solution to that same problem. How do we do a, this provably fair system? But it comes at it from a purely game theoretic perspective, which is to say, you take the token itself and I say, I want to be the one who will be selected to add this next block to the blockchain and therefore win a reward. I'm going to stake some of my currency. I'm going to actually put some of my currency in escrow, basically. And the more currency I put in escrow, the higher the chance is that I'm going to be the one who gets picked. So it's similar to proof of work that I've got to put more at risk in order to have a greater chance of winning. And it's truly at risk. If I lie and say, I've got the 20 Bitcoins and Amy Joe has none, I can be slashed because everyone's verifying it. And if everyone verifies and says that I lie, then I lose what I stake. So I, I, it's actually risky to me. Now, getting that to work in practice, really, you know, lots of really brilliant technical minds are working on the game theory. Back to our earlier point about people gaming the system, you know everyone's going to game the system. But the point of that proof of stake is it's costly to me. I put money at risk, but it's not costly in the sense of I spend money on mining rigs and electricity. So it doesn't have the energy usage. It seems way better. It's way better if it works. So the, the counter argument is it's not going to work. <laughs> that, and it's unfair. There's a whole, all but variations of this different system do proof of stake in different ways. And there's other things that are not quite proof of stake. There's something called Chia, which is proof of available space on hard drives. There are other things in this class of solution. We're not sure it can work. Again, we have an existence proof that Bitcoin is you know, at the peak, a trillion dollar asset that has not been hacked in over 10 years. That's cool. That suggests we should be confident that proof of work works. We don't have anything with nearly that duration or scale of proof of stake. The other thing is the concern is I have more power if I'm richer, right? In Bitcoin, I have more power if I've got more computing power, but how much computing power I have is not the same as how much Bitcoin I have. And so the concern is if we create a system where the rich are also powerful by virtue of being rich, that's problematic from an ethical standpoint and from just a functional societal social contract standpoint. So there's all kinds of responses to that in proof of stake. I would tend to agree. I think long-term, this is the winning class of approaches, but these are legitimate concerns and legitimate problems. And we certainly are not at the point where anyone can say with certainty that there is an approach that will work at scale and continue working. Want to level up your product skills and get expert coaching from industry leaders like Kevin? In our Game Thinking programs, we help innovative product leaders accelerate product market fit and build lasting retention from the ground up. Learn more and apply now at gamethinking.io slash programs.